Well, let's show the mechanism for this reaction. That's it. Looks like you have made some good progress on those reactions. That's good. We won't have to spend as much time on that then. So the nucleophile attacks, and as you saw, we don't need any additional catalyst for this because we're at the top of a reactivity chart. And now the leaving group just leaves. The leaving group here doesn't need any help to leave. It's already a good leaving group. So the leaving group just leaves. And you also noticed that we don't end up with this positive charge. So at the end, we need to get rid of this. You left out the mechanism for that. Maybe it's a little bit better to show the mechanism. We can use the chloride that left to do this deprotonation step. That's a technicality, though. You really did get the mechanism right there. That's good. By the way, as another technicality, usually this reaction is done in the presence of some base, like pyridine. And the reason is, notice that one of the byproducts here was hydrochloric acid. But we probably don't want to accumulate a lot of acid. So as a technicality, usually this would be done in the presence of base just to sponge up this acid over here. They might say pyridine here, just to say that the pyridine here is going to sponge up this acid. That's a technicality. The important points here are that you saw the nucleophile would attack, and then the carbonyl would reform, and then we need to do this deprotonation step. That's good. Well then, how do, and what type of functional group is this? Ester. Ester, that's right. Not a carboxylic acid, but an ester, good. So how do we make esters? Well, we can make an ester out of other carboxylic acids or acid derivatives, but what do we have to have attack the carboxylic acid derivative to make an ester? What type of nucleophile do we use? Alcohol. Good, an alcohol. And I think we talked about this last time. Many students would get this wrong because this doesn't look like an alcohol anymore because it's deprotonated. Many people don't realize that you make esters using alcohols because after it deprotonates, it doesn't look like an alcohol anymore. But it's very important to look at this and say, aha, this could have come by an attack with an alcohol because it, after an attack, it lost its proton. By the same token, then, how can we make carboxylic acid, how, I'm sorry, how can we make anhydrides? What had to attack to put this group here? That whole second portion of it. Yeah, but what functional group would that be? Draw what, it would look, draw what it would look like. Yeah, draw what it would look, what it would look like. Ah, so it sounds like you're having, say, this attack over here. Right, so I was thinking of this here as the L group. So if this attacked this, then we would get this anhydride. So that's good. So the important thing is, a good way to make anhydrides is to have a carboxylic acid attack an acid to attack, say, an acyl halide, even though it doesn't look like a carboxylic acid anymore because it's deprotonated. But before it attacked, it had this extra proton. So it's good that we're getting comfortable with that. What type of functional group would we have attack a carboxylic acid derivative to make an amide? We could do NH3. Yeah, an amine. So the key thing is, you would have an amine that has one more hydrogen than the amide you're trying to produce. Because you would expect that after the amine attacks, it's going to deprotonate. Good. This again will be important for our peptide chemistry. 
In peptide chemistry, amide bonds are very important. Well, how do we produce amide bonds having an amine attack a carboxylic acid or acid derivative? 